Thanks for joining me. I'm Scott and I'm restoring guitars in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I've got an Epiphone F110 from 1955. It was made in Queens, New York. Uh, before Gibson acquired Epiphone and brought them to Michigan, they made guitars in New York. And this is one of those. So it's very rare that it's here uh, with me right now. Um, the reason it's here is because I guess it had a replacement bridge. This looks like a harmony, doesn't it? That's what he said he thought it was. And it had a bunch of glue around here. So the new owner of it scraped and sanded away this ugly old glue and it left him with this raw wood, which is rather bumpy. We're going to take a closer look at that. But let's take a good look around the guitar. It looks like the original wood binding may be this edge on the treble side and this white plastic binding on the base side might be replacement. I don't know, it's a different color than the rest. I'm just guessing for right now. But we'll take a closer look and things will start to reveal themselves, I'm sure. Let's put it over here and we'll zoom in a little closer. So this model has an arched back but a flat top, which uh, some people find very interesting, but Epiphone made a lot of arch top guitars and arch that had arched backs, so it makes sense that they uh, have arched backs. Let's see what we can do about this spot. Start over here with a little Zinzer spray shellac on a Q tip. So Putting clear finish on raw wood that's been sanded this rough looks kind of dark. So it might be a good idea to sand the wood further with a finer grit. Let's see what happens. I'll sand this area with 320. Now this is 400. It still looks dark. Based on the, all the surrounding wood, looks a little dark. I guess I could seal it with this and then sand it back slightly till it lightens up. Let's let that dry. So I'm testing things out. I'm kind of doing things trial and error. I'm taking this Endurovar 2 polyurethane. I'm going to just put a small amount in a cup and I'm going to take the mix all white and I'm going to put white pigment one drop into here because um, the sealer coat is making the wood look darker than I want it and I'm thinking that if I brush on a little bit of this white pigment it'll bring me back to that lighter shade that I want. So I'm going to brush this on the test area and wait an hour and come back and look and see how it looks. Hopefully it looks good. Before I brushed the sealer coat or uh, applied the sealer coat to this area I resanded it with 300, 400 and this 600 J Flex paper and then I wiped on the uh, shellac with the Q-tip Now I'm brushing on polyurethane with one drop of white pigment. And this is a totally an experiment. This is 
never been done before by me. I mean, I've I've mixed this one time, this polyest polyurethane with white pigment. I did it one time. This guy had a Gretsch white falcon, and the bridge foot left a weird yellow stain on the top. And um, I mixed up a thick old batch of this stuff and plopped it on there, and it, it looked a lot better. Didn't look like brand new or anything, but we're trying to make progress here, not perfection. Alrighty. We'll come back and see what happens. If we have a lighter color, that's easier to work with than a darker color. We could always spray like a vintage amber over top with the airbrush over this lighter shade and blend it. So I think we're moving in the right direction, but come back in a little bit and look. Okay, now that we've let the whitewash urethane dry for an hour, we're not looking at this spot. This is our test area right here. We're going to mix up another batch with a translucent tint. Now I'm going to mix vintage amber and golden brown into my brush on urethane. I'm not even going to put a full drop. I'm going to take a little bit on the tip of this and mix it and wipe off the rest onto this paper towel and I'm going to grab a little vintage amber just a pin prick and wipe it and then I get my brush and go back over this is my very diluted vintage amber with golden brown. This is water-based stuff, so it's not super toxic or anything. Yeah, I could probably use two coats. So I sent the customer a picture. This is the area I worked on. And uh, he said, yeah, it looks great. Go ahead. So I'm going to do the, do the rest of it. This side down here is really chewed into the wood. We'll see. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sand the rest of this and uh, do my thing. So hopefully it looks good. Now I probably don't want to use a Q-tip for the whole thing, but I'll kind of cut it in around the edges. I don't know. And then I'll grab a paper towel and wipe on the rest. Let that dry. Mixed up a new batch of milky white. I thinned it down a little too. It needs to be lighter. Back to the recipe board.
All right, got a little fresh urethane. Here's some of the other color that I was using earlier. I just put a little water in it to uh, preserve it for for later use. And so that's made me a real thin mixture here. Probably too thin, but that's okay. I'd rather do many thin coats than throw a big wad of thick urethane on there in one, one little thing, just have it all nasty. I don't think the camera's picking up exactly how much color is going down. Okay, got a new batch here. Fresh in from the garage, I sprayed a mixture of lacquer with um, golden brown and vintage amber over the entire area. And you can see there's kind of this ring around where he sanded, a little darker. I'm going to scratch that back to lighten it up a little bit. And that will uh, create a more gentle transition. And then after I scratch it all back like with this razor blade, I'll shoot one more coat of clear. I don't know, maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. Let's zoom in. This spot looks unusually dark, so I'm going to hit that with a 3M. And this, this was a very light coating of, of lacquer that I did. I, um, I took a half ounce of lacquer, and it was a real thin mix, and I uh, I added six drops of golden brown and four drops of vintage amber to the mix, and I just kind of went over the area, kind of homogenized everything. I think it looks a little bit better except for that ring, so I'm going to keep picking away at it for a minute, and we'll shoot it. Okay, <clears throat> now we'll shoot another coat and see what's happening. Well, it's been a week. I've done a couple things now. I've taken it down to the garage and loaded up the air brush. And I'll tell you what I did. I just want to make sure I carefully remove this tape. I've said this in previous videos, but it's worth saying it again. Pull your tape off very slowly. And you can even take a, an X-Acto blade and uh, score around the edges. But uh, this one I had to... I actually like using this black pickup coil tape. It's a real thin... It's easy to tear. It's, uh, you know, on your humbuckers. It holds the two coils together. So you'll notice it on, on 
open coil humbucker pickups that has this tape wrapped around the coil. Anyways, what did I do? What did I do? First I went out and I took white pigment mixed with lacquer and I I started spraying a little bit more of a wash because things were getting too dark. So I wanted to lighten it up a little bit and that, that, was, that was like, oh no, that was too white. So I took the vintage amber liquid stain and the golden brown at a three to one ratio. So in one ounce of lacquer, and this isn't a real thick build coat of lacquer, this, this, this lacquer substance was like half and half lacquer thinner, lacquer, kind of thin. One ounce, little cup, you know, smaller than that, and three drops of liquid, uh, vintage amber and one drop of golden brown, and I just kind of general went over the general area, and I think it's good enough for, for this. Um, next thing I want to do is look at these screws. Let me go inside and take a take a peek. That was crazy. There's a wing nut holding this one on, and. Uh, it seems to be glued in place. It seems to be coming up anyhow. It's a rubbery feeling glue. Probably just type on original glue. I really don't think these screws are the main force holding this bridge down. Geez, that's a long screw for a bridge. And it's, it's still coming. Okay. Looks like we could put a pearl dot over that. Actually, these are 7 millimeter pearl. They look like they're closer to a good fit than those eight millimeter perloid, but I've got a seven millimeter uh, brad point bit here, and I'm gonna see if see if I can't make it fit just right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna get these plugged in here and uh, shave them down, put the strings back on. We're gonna give her a listen. Okay, got the gel control. Super glue. Very nice. Same thing over here. Very nice indeed. Here's a look at my Brad Point bit set. A good investment if you ever have to uh, drill a hole for a dot. I think I'll name this guitar Caroline. When it began can't begin to know it, but then I know it's growing strong. 
strong Was in the spring Then spring became the summer Okay, that's about enough. Well, thanks again, guys. Appreciate you subscribing, and we'll catch you later.